Hey everybody, Brett Thompson uh, with Thompson Law Group. All right, we're gonna do another Teaching Tuesday, another Closing Ninja Classroom. Today I wanna talk about different kind of warranties that can come along in a deed, all right, from the seller, also known as the grantor on the deed. So the highest and best, so we're gonna go from best to worst here. The highest and best um, type of warranty is called a general warranty. So on a general warranty, the seller, known as the grantor, is saying, hey, I'm going to warrant the title to the property, meaning that I will defend your right to the title all the way back in the chain of title. So I'll defend it against anybody. So I will warrant the title and defend it against anybody that were to have an adverse claim to your claim to title, to your claim to the ownership. Now, very often in a general warranty deed, also you're going to see what's called English covenants of title. And there are four English covenants of title, and that kind of just spells it out in, uh, in more detail and more specifics um, what the warranties are. So number one is the right to convey. So this warrants that, hey, I have an absolute right to convey the property as the seller. I don't have to get permission from anybody else in the world in order to con convey my interest to you. Number two, um, quiet possession and free from encumbrances. All right, so quiet possession, that doesn't mean... Uh, that your, your neighbors are not gonna have the music up loud, okay? Quiet possession means that you have the right to possess the property and nobody else can make a claim, such as through a lease or whatnot, um, to possess or have an interest in the property other than you. So you, you can quietly and peaceably uh, possess the property. Free from encumbrances. This is, covers a number of things. This is, uh, encumbrance could be um, mortgage liens, judgment liens, um, it could be easements, any kind of encroachments, um, uh, tax liens. So it's saying that there are no encumbrances that would adversely affect your title ownership in the property. Number three, the third um, English covenant of title is further assurances. So as the grantor, the seller, they're also saying that, hey, I will give you further assurances, meaning that if something came up and there was an adverse claim and I had to sign another deed to clarify or to correct the prior deed or, or another document to further assure that I have conveyed you fee simple ownership interest in the property and that you own the whole thing and you have general warranty, I will make those further assurances in, in, in any document or, or any act. Um, if you got sued, I could come in and defend your right if, it, if the suit was about the title ownership of the property. Number four is the no acts to encumber. This means that the seller has also not taken any um, uh, proactive steps that could encumber the property, such as agree to grant an easement on the property, or I, I didn't. The, the seller didn't go last week and sign another contract for the sale of the property to a second party. Therefore, they could claim an, a, 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 an interest in the property as a contract owner. Uh, so these are the general warranty and the English covenants to title. That's what you want if you're the buyer. You want to have that in your deed. That's that's the the best assurance and the best warranty you can get. A special warranty deed would be next in line here. A special warranty deed basically says that, hey, during my watch, during the time that I own the property, I haven't done anything that would adversely affect your title ownership of the property. So I'm gonna convey it to you, and during my watch, <clears throat> I haven't done anything to screw the title up. It does not make any warranty for anything that happened prior to when I owned it. So prior in time in the chain of title, I'm not gonna warrant against any claims that may have arisen before I took ownership to the property. So it's not as good as general warranty. Now, a quick claim deed is no good, okay? A quick claim deed basically says, hey, if I own the property, if I have any ownership interest in the property, you can have whatever ownership interest that I may have. So it doesn't even warrant that you own the property. So it doesn't even guarantee, if you will, that the seller actually owns what he's trying to convey to you. So a quick claim deed simply says, hey, if I own any part of it, you can have this part that I may or may not own. No good. Now, I just I threw in a uh, deed of gift down here at the bottom. It's not a warranty, okay, but I get a lot of questions about a deed of gift. A deed of gift simply says that there's no monetary consideration um, for the transfer, me meaning that it's not a taxable event, all right? If there was monetary consideration, you'd have um, a state and local transfer taxes, known as a grantor's tax and a grantee's tax. A deed of gift um, is giving the property away, okay, it's a gift. So there's no, there's, there's nothing of value in exchange for the conveyance of the property. Any deed of gift you can have, you can deed of gift it via general warranty, special warranty. You could quick claim deed of gift it as well. Just, it's just, it simply says there's, there's no monetary consideration for the transaction. So if you are a buyer, you want a general warranty, okay? 
Um, the next in line is a special warranty. You're probably going to see a special warranty if you buy it from a foreclosure trustee or from a bank um, or um, from an estate, okay, because they don't want to um, expose themselves to liability, anything uh, in, the, in the past, all right, in the chain of title. So that is uh, warranty deeds in a nutshell, okay, that's very uh, summarized version of it, but I wanted to uh, add a little value to your lives today. Thank you.